What's going on everybody, my name is Rico, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my channel is about vlogs, series and tutorials. And in this episode we are going to edit a picture that I took of a river. And this my friends is the image that we're going to work with. I've put all the modules that we're going to use in this tutorial in my favorites. I know I say this every tutorial but I'm pretty sure I've got them all lined up right now. Uh, I've already hit the compress history stack so I'll show you guys the difference between the final image and this image in a minute. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to change the white balance simply because i think the white balance is a little bit off on this picture so let's open up that module and what i want to do is i want to change the preset the preset is uh, set to camera basically is taking over the white balance that the camera has selected i want to change that to spot and you can change it to uh, several let's say presets so like warm white fluorescent cool white fluorescent but in this case, I want to uh, pick my own spot for the white balance. I'm going to place it on the water like so. If you're not able to draw a box like this, what you can do is you can go to the color picker over here and change the point to area. And that way you will have the same result as I do. And as you can see, the image became a little bit more warm and it suits the uh, morning glow that this image has. I've shot this at around 6.30 a.m. or something like that because I wanted to uh, make advantage of the golden hour. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to demosaic the image. And for those of you that are watching my channel for a while now, know that I have a Panasonic GH5 and that's why I put it on a maze because I think that works best for my camera. So I'm going to close it down. Now what I want to do is I want to uh, crop this image. I want to change how that looks. I'm going to use a four by five ratio. So I'm going to the crop and rotate module. I'm going to place this. So the uh, aspect, sorry for the quick fix over here, aspect. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change that to four by five because that's the Instagram size for your image. And what I want to do is I don't want to cut this off but I think this looks pretty horrible. So I'm going to just go like this. So the bridge is still in the rules of thirds line. So I'm going to double click it. And now the image has been automatically cropped. So we've got this big foreground object and we've got some middle ground and we've got some background as well. So that's it for the crop and rotate module. So let's just close that down because we're done with that. And what I want to do right now is I want to uh, denoise this image. Now, if you go to the denoise profile, that means that you've got several presets to use. So two, chroma for the first instance and luma for the second instance. And as you can see, it found a match for ISO 100. So it actually got a profile for a picture like this. I'm going to keep everything as is, but I'm going to place this on chroma, use on first instance. And now you see that this is being applied. And now we need to uh, create another instance. You can do that by hitting this symbol right here and click new instance. And now what we need to do is we need to use the second one. And now the image has been denoised accordingly. So now that the image is being denoised, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the haze. Uh, this image got a lot of haze, uh, probably because it was morning, it was a little bit misty. Uh, you've got the reflections with the sunlight and stuff like that. So for that, I'm going to use the haze removal module. And as you can see, the standard words are set to 0 0.5 and the distance is set to 0 0.25 or 250. And in this case, I want to have this. So I'm going to press the right mouse button, fill in 0 0.25. And that will automatically activate this module. So you can activate it by hand manually or you can just change the words and then it will be applied automatically. Now let me show you guys a before and after for if you didn't catch it. So this is with the haze removal turned on. Now I'm going to turn it off for you guys. And this is how it looks with the haze removal turned off. And as you can see, 
a lot more contrast is being introduced into the image and it even makes the colors look a little bit better as well so now that we've done that i want to because we've denoised the image things become a little bit more soft so i want to sharpen them up a little bit and for that i'm going to use the sharpen module and i'm going to change something about these words but first let me activate it and you might not be able to see the difference but i'll show you guys in a minute and the amount i'm going to put it on zero and i'm going to keep the radius on two now let's zoom in on the bridge with uh, the mouse wheel button so i'm scrolling it away from me to zoom in on the image you can see it over here as well it's set to 100 percent right now and now let's deactivate this module and watch what happens to the bridge it's it's very blurry it's less sharp than when you activate it so let me activate it boom and now the bridge comes out a lot better so let me place this back to fit the screen to move on to the next module and the next module that we're going to use is the color balance module and you guys saw me use uh, the orange and teal in a lot of videos in this case i'm not going to build the orange and teal myself because i do think that orange and teal will match this image perfectly but i'm going to use the color balance and i'm going to use the presets that come with it and this is how the color balance module looks you can change all kinds of things you can change the colors in the shadows colors in the midtones and colors in the highlights and you can change the lightness as well so if I move it to the right the image becomes a lot more bright and if I move it to the left the image becomes a lot more dark so let me go back up and let me reset everything that I've done by clicking this symbol right here reset parameters and now the image is back to where we started with I'm going to click this symbol right here again and now you see that you've got a couple of options and for this image i want to use the split toning teal and orange and by selecting the split toning teal and orange this module will activate the things or change the things around that are needed to create an orange and teal look so i'm going to click this one for the first instance and now the water has become a lot more blue and i'm going to create another instance and for that i'm going to use the second one and boom, there you have it. Now orange and teal is being applied to the image. Let me show you guys the before and after. So I'm just going to select the sharpen module. So this is before the orange and teal applied through the color balance module. And now let's click this layer. And now the image has got the orange and teal applied to it. So what I want to do right now is I want to change the colors to make them pop a little bit more. And for that, I'm going to use the Velvia module. I'm going to activate it. I'm not going to change anything else. I'm just going to keep it as is. But I want to tweak the colors a little bit more. And for that, I'm going to use the split toning module. So let me open that up. And I want to introduce browns into the shadows. And I want to introduce blues into the highlights. But I'm going to click this symbol right here. So I want some browns into the shadows, like so. And I want some blues into the highlights, like so. And let's see how that looks. I think the saturation in the shadows is a little bit too much so I'm going to use the right mouse button and cut it in half to see how that looks there you go that looks a lot better I'm going to increase the saturation of the highlights to make it stand out a lot better and I think this looks pretty cool let me show you guys a before and after so I'm going to switch it off here's the before I'm going to activate it here's the after so the rocks became a lot more brown like and that's it for the split toning module but i do see that the clouds are have this blue kind of cast on them and the snow as well so i'm just going to use a quick mask just for the sake of this tutorial so i'm going to press this symbol right here drawn mask and i'm going to use the path and i'm going to add a path over here so this is the area that i want to be affected i don't want the sky to be affected right mouse button to close down the mask and as you can see the changes are only being applied to the water and the clouds and the sky and everything stays the same so i'm going to close it down i'm going to the next module which is the exposure module so let me open that one up and let me activate it now you can change the exposure by dragging these points to the left or over here to the right but you can do it by moving the sliders to the right or to the left any way you like but for this tutorial i'm going to use it manually so right mouse button 0.4 i think because it's a fairly dark image yeah it's starting to look a little bit washed out but we'll take care of that in a minute because i want to change the black point as well 
Let's see how this looks. So I did that by scrolling the mouse wheel button away from me. So that looks a lot better. So let's close that one down. And what I want to do right now is I want to change how this image looks. So what I want to do is I want to add a blue cast to this image. So for that, I'm going to use the color contrast module. I'm going to open that one up. And that allows you to add more greens or add more magentas or to add more blues or to add more yellows. So basically to extract greens or extract blues or extract yellows and extract magenta. So I want to increase the yellows a little bit to make it even more warmer than it already is. Now you saw that this was getting a more yellow like tint. Let me show you guys before and after. So I'm going to switch it off. I know I said a blue cast, but I'm in a yellow cast. I'm sorry for that. That's what you get with bloopers. You know, I can cut it out, but this allows you to see you guys that I'm not perfect. I need a couple of takes every now and then as well. So let me activate it. And there you have it. More yellows have been applied to the image. Now let me close that one down. And now what I want to do, and this is one of my most favorite modules in Darktable, is I want to change how the trees look. I think they look a little bit too yellow for my taste so i want to introduce more greens into them so i'm going to open up the color zones module and because i don't want to change the saturation so let's say i want to change the saturation of the greens so i pull this all the way up and now you see that the greens in this image are being saturated some more uh, i can reset that but i want to change the hue so for that i'm going to use the color picker I'm going to place them on the trees i'm just going to move it around like so to see where on this right side the colors are so let's just move it over here just to make sure that i'm getting a nice uh broad spectrum there you go so i know the colors are basically somewhere over here so i'm going to make a point over here i'm going to make a point over here there you go i'm going to drag this up into the greens but not too much because i don't want to have it look artificial there you go boom the tree suddenly became more green instead of yellow i hope you guys saw that so let me deactivate this module boom now they are yellow or brownish I'm going to activate it boom there we have it a lot more green is being introduced into the image i think this looks a little bit too strong so to counteract that what i'm going to do is i'm going to this symbol right here uniformly which is a blend mode i'm going to drag it down I'm just going to change the opacity from 100% to 50%. There you go. So now it became less strong. The effect is still visible, but it doesn't look as artificial. So let me show you guys the before and after by switching it off. Here's the module switch off. Now let me switch it back on again. And there you have it. It's a nice and subtle change, but everything looks a lot more natural right now. The next module that we're going to use is used to bring back some contrast into this image, which is the tone curve module. And I want to change the shadows, I want to change the midtones, and I want to change the highlights. Uh, for that, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to click the symbol, and this is the over and underexposed indication. So that will show you what's over and what's underexposed. Everything in red is overexposed and everything in black is underexposed. As you can see, nothing is being underexposed, but huge parts are being overexposed. Uh, I always start with the shadow side and then move my way up. I'm going to introduce an S type kind of curve. I'm going to drag down this point to decrease the blacks a little bit. Now let's see if we are crushing anything. No, we're not. So we don't have any underexposed parts, so I don't need to lift the black point over here. We still have a lot of overexposed parts, but I want to change the midtones first to brighten the image up. There you go, that looks a lot more better. It looks a little bit washed out to be honest, so let's see what happens if I move this point around a little bit. There you go, that's the area I want to affect. And I want to uh, increase the highlights a little bit. That might sound stupid because everything has been overexposed already. But I'm going to drag down this point, which means we don't have true whites in the image anymore. And there you go. Now, most of the parts have faded away. So I think that looks pretty fine. We don't have any underexposed parts, so that's cool. Let me close it down. Let me switch off this symbol right here. And there you go. Now the image has gotten a lot more contrast and it's already popping a little bit more and it's actually looking better if you ask me. So this is before we have the module applied. So this is after the color zones module. And now with the tone curve module, 
this is how the image looks so the water is a lot more brighter and that's exactly the look i want to go for but i do think this is a little bit strong again so i'm going to this symbol right here again uniformly put it on 50 percent just to take off the edge a little bit and there you have it now it did become a little bit more dull but i can live with that so let me close it down i want to increase the vibrance so the vibrance module let me activate it and i'm going to keep the vibrance on 25 percent you can put it on 100 percent if you like and more colors will be introduced into the image but i think 25 percent is just very subtly i like subtle changes in an image i don't really like it to make my image look artificial i do have a great tutorial coming up for you guys in which i am going to make an image artificial but i'll show you guys that some other time the next thing that i want to do is i want to use the contrast brightness and saturation module so let me open that one up uh, i want to introduce some contrast and don't go overboard with this because this is a very powerful uh, module if you ask me look what happens if i just drag it like so boom a lot more contrast if i drag it to the left boom a lot less contrast so don't go overboard that's my advice let's see how that looks with 0.10 that looks pretty cool uh, I want to change the brightness a little bit as well. So I'm going to use 0.05. Usually, for those of you who watch my previous videos, hear me say that if you increase the contrast, you need to decrease the brightness. In this specific case, I'm going for a different type of look. And that's why I'm going to increase the contrast together with the brightness. And then what's left is the saturation. So I'm going to pump up the saturation a little bit more again, like so. And as you can see, now everything has got a lot more color. It looks a lot more warmer as well. And there's one more module that I want to use. I won't use the chromatic aberrations uh, module, but that will uh, get rid of artificial things over here. Right now this image doesn't have it, so you don't see any purple lines or whatever outlines over here. So I don't think I need to use it right now. There might be some over here in this poll, but you can't really tell. So let's zoom out again. So let's open up the local contrast module. I'm going to keep everything as is, except guess what? We are going to put it on 150% again. My favorite number in this module. Everything is popping a lot better. Now let me take a snapshot. Boom, we're taking a snapshot from this image. Let's go back to the original. Boom, this is the image that we started to work with. Everything is a lot more dull. The composition is different. Let's activate the snapshot and just Look what happens. This is the original one. Let me drag it to the right. I'm very satisfied with how this looks. I hope you guys are too. So one more time. This is the original. Let me drag this to the left like so. This is our new image. I hope you guys could follow along. And that's it. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And I guess for this week, there's just one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that bell button to be the first to be notified when I drop in a video. And until next time, doei!